Welcome to our lecture online, and now for the real big one. It turns out there's a galaxy in the Virgo cluster known as M87 and the lesser known NGC assignment of 4486. Now, inside at the center of that galaxy, and that galaxy M87 is a super massive galaxy in itself, the galaxy is about 40 times the mass of our own Milky Way galaxy, and our Milky Way galaxy is an above average galaxy. So M87 is just an enormously large galaxy inside the Virgo cluster. Now the Virgo cluster is a cluster of galaxies and has about 2,500 galaxies and one of them is M87. At the very center is a black hole and just recently, within the last year or so, they've actually taken a picture of the black hole. Not the black hole, of course, because as you can see, there's nothing to be seen there, but around the black hole is an accretion disk. And the reason why there's an accretion disk, because it's an active black hole. And it turns out we've also taken pictures of the radio lobes, and we can also see the glow of the very fast moving particles in the beams of particles going out to the radio lobes. So they're visible. We've taken pictures of those before, but for the first time, we actually took a picture of the accretion disk of the black hole itself at the very center of that enormous galaxy. Now, we measured the mass of that, of that uh, central region based on the speed of the gaseous material in the accretion disk that's rotating very fast going around the black hole. And so using the equation that we take the velocity squared of the material in the accretion disk times the radius to the accretion disk from the black hole divided by g, the universal gravitational constant. And based upon that, we understood and realized that the mass of the supermassive black hole is about six and a half billion times the mass of the sun, more than a thousand times the size of the supermassive black hole in our own galaxy at the center. It's one of the biggest black holes that we've ever discovered, six and a half billion times the mass of the sun. And since Typically, the typical size of a star is about 40% the mass of the sun. You can imagine that in its lifetime, that black hole has swallowed up about maybe 15 billion, let's say four, two and a half, yeah, about 15 billion stars. Imagine that, that that black hole has been very active. And it's not done yet. It's still swallowing up stars, currently at a rate of about a tenth of a solar mass per year or one solar mass star every 10 years. So it's still active, it has the radio lobes, it has the accretion disk, and we're able to actually take a picture of it. And there it is. That was quite a feat using the, uh, the special techniques, interferometry, to, uh, with some very big telescopes to get that incredible picture. And so there you can see there's some very big black holes in our universe. Does the, what is the, when the accretion disk spins around, does the radio lobes spin? No. No, because the radial lobes are perpendicular to the accretion disk. So the accretion disk goes around like this, and the radial lobes go perpendicular to the area of the, uh, of the accretion disk. Yeah, that's quite a monster. What's the diameter of the accretion disk? Oh, you got me on this one. Um, it's probably out in the neighborhood of about a thousand astronomical units. The diameter? Yeah, the radius, I think, is about a thousand astronomical units. It's huge, yeah. yeah. Which is still much less than a light year, by the way. Because. How far to, to which um, planet is it? Oh, remember, the, uh, Pluto is about 40 astronomical units, so it would be about. Uh, about 25 times the distance from the sun to Pluto. So it's a big, huge, enormous uh, accretion disk. Yeah, that's not going to swallow that whole... The galaxy? Mm -hmm. Nope. It's tiny compared to the galaxy. The uh, galaxy has two trillion solar masses. I'll take it back. Ten trillion solar masses. You want to hear more now? <laughs> 10 trillion solar masses for that galaxy. It's big. All right. That's it for tonight. Thank you.